Hey everybody, this is Matt Goldman from Gamers Cast. In the past, I've made it very clear that Assassin's Creed is one of my favorite game series. So, despite becoming an annualized franchise, I still continue to hold the games in very high esteem and expect great things from them. So, when the first truly new gen Assassin's Creed game hit, I was excited. But was my excitement misplaced? Here's my review of Assassin's Creed Unity, available now on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Assassin's Creed Unity takes place during the French Revolution. You follow the life of new assassin, Arno Dorian. The plot itself is decent enough, but we've seen far better storytelling from this series in the past. It's certainly not the best, but it's also definitely not the worst either. It's a fair story that gets the job done. However, the setting for this game definitely gives it more of the feel that the Ezio games had in the Assassin's Creed 2 trilogy. The streets of Paris, France really pop and feel alive, with lots and lots of NPCs lining the roads at all times. Rifts in the game also allow you to experience Paris throughout different points in history, including during the Nazi occupation, making this particular setting very well chosen. Graphically, the game looks great. Animations and cutscenes are well animated and look fantastic. It really makes playing the game feel really fresh and really immersive, like a really, really shiny new coat of paint. However, this game's immersion is often broken by lots of technical hiccups. While the PC build of the game seems to have been getting the worst of it, the consoles are far from excused either. I primarily played on the PlayStation 4 build of the game and experienced a decent amount of frame rate drops. The most concerning to me is that whenever I entered a menu at any time, the fans on my PlayStation 4 would max out. This would make me very nervous and terrified of buying things at any shop because the menus for some reason were making my PlayStation overheat. The system would actually get hot enough at times that entering menus would cause the system's built-in streaming functions to crash. Couple this along with very long load times, and when I say very long load times, I mean to the point where you prefer running over fast travel, Arno's tendency to fall through the map, and textures that just choose not to load at times, and you have yourself a somewhat tarnished experience. Speaking of breaking immersion, the game's microtransactions have gotten a bit too bold for my liking. I've sort of paid these no mind in the past, but it's gotten to the point where they're almost forcing themselves into the center of attention. The game acts as if it's running off of the free-to-play model with hack credits that you can use to upgrade weapons faster, along with the return of time saver packs that you can purchase a limitless number of times. It makes you wonder if collectibles were purposely spread far apart enough to make you want to purchase one of these packs. It's a little unsettling. It's even more unsettling how many times you'll come across a chest just to get a message saying that you need to download and play a mobile companion app just to unlock lock the ability to open a chest that barely contains any reward at all. As someone who doesn't own a smartphone, I feel like I'm being excluded and I have an incomplete experience. It's really sad that all of these things have happened to this game when it really does do a lot of things right. It's also very obvious that a lot of hard work and detail went into this game to make Paris really come alive. The combat system's been refined a bit and parkour feels even more fluent than ever. Finally being able to have a fluently controlled descent is an absolutely fantastic addition to the system. Assassination missions do feel a lot less linear in multiple ways to take down your target, and many of the buildings have interiors you can explore now. But overall, the gameplay doesn't feel like anything revolutionary, groundbreaking, or anything too different than we've seen before. The big draw of this game is that you can play online co-op with a friend. There is no local play option for multiplayer, and you can only play through certain select missions with a friend. These missions are well done, and can still be tackled solo if you prefer. A friend is not required though, as you can also attempt to do these missions with strangers online. There is a lot of content on display here in Assassin's Creed Unity. The main story alone should take you about 15 hours to clear, and if you're looking to collect everything, you can probably tack on another 10 hours to the experience. The overworld map is basically a collect-a-thon with things to do or things to choose to ignore. How you play the game is pretty much your own experience and ultimately comes down to player preference. There's also the promise of DLC on the horizon to look forward to. All in all, Assassin's Creed Unity is a decent title that shows a lot of potential for what the future of the franchise could hold for on the new generation platforms. But between the immersion-breaking technical hiccups, microtransactions, it's being held back. 
It's essentially a very pretty but very run-of-the-mill Assassin's Creed experience. After the wonderful experience that was Assassin's Creed Black Flag, it feels like the game is missing something that would really help the series break out. Every Assassin's Creed game since Assassin's Creed 2 has allied on some sort of gimmick, and while this game is an obvious attempt to return to the basics, in doing so, the game feels like it's missing something. It's really hard for me to say all this considering the obvious hard work that went into creating this game. However, if you're at all familiar with Assassin's Creed, you should already know what you're getting yourself into. Assassin's Creed Unity gets a 7.9 out of 10.